the Lord continues his conversation with Gamal, Shammai, and Hillel, but it's mainly with Shammai. He says, and this is not the victory which Israel, he's continuing a conversation. He's talking with the Pharisees, explaining to them what the kingdom of God is. It's not the human kingdom that they're looking for. It's a spiritual kingdom. He says, and this is not the victory which Israel is expecting from him. Your king will come, Jerusalem, city of peace, riding a donkey and a colt. That is, the just people of Israel, prince with God, are the donkey, and the Gentiles are the colt. But I tell you <clears throat> that the colt will be more faithful to him, and will follow him preceding the donkey, and will grow in the ways of truth and life. Because of its evil will, Israel, prince with God, will lose its peace and suffer for centuries, and will cause its king to suffer, and will make him the king of sorrow of whom Isaiah speaks. Shammai says, Your mouth talks of milk and blasphemy at the same time, Nazarene. Tell me, where is the forerunner? When did we have him? Holy salvation says, He is. Does not Malachi, Malachi say, Here I am, going to send my messenger to prepare the way before me. And the I am who I am you are seeking will suddenly enter his temple, and the angel of the covenant whom you are longing for. Therefore, the forerunner, precursor, immediately precedes the anointed king. He already is as the anointed king is. If years should elapse between him who prepares the ways for the Lord and the anointed king, all the ways would become obstructed and twisted again. God Almighty knows and arranges beforehand that the forerunner should precede the master by one hour only. When you see this forerunner, you will be able to say the mission of the anointed king is beginning. And, in, and I say to you, the anointed one will open many eyes and many ears when he comes this way. He will not open yours or those of people like you. And he continues his conversation with them, talking about the maledictions because of deicide that would come. And, and, then for sake, and then his subject will be only those who, for his sake, will learn to regenerate in the spirit and like Jonah, after being born, learn to be born again on the shores of God which will take place through Christ, who will give humanity life. Shammai says, you know, condemns Christ. Hillel, as far as, say, stay with me. We want to hear more. And he says, your knowledge infused to us, and combined with ours, we will make you even wiser and make you a master. The Savior says, salvation would come to Israel if men, people were like you, he says. And then, uh, in addition to that, voices. then he says, I'm waiting for the voices from heaven to speak to me, and in solitude I must gather them until my hour comes. Then with my lips and my blood, I'll speak to the city of peace, Jerusalem, and the destiny of prophets stoned and killed by her will also be my destiny. But above my life, there is the Lord God. To my submit myself as a faithful servant, to make of myself a footstool for his glory, a stool for his glory, waiting that he will make the world a stool at the feet of Christ, the anointed one. Wait for me in my hour. These stones of the temple shall hear my voice again, and these stones will vibrate violently, hearing my last word. Blessed are those who in that voice will have heard God and believed in him. Because of it, to them, the anointed king will give, the king, give that kingdom, which your selfishness imagines to be a human one, where he says that they have only one, and therefore I say, here is your servant, Lord, who has come to do your will. Let it be consummated, because I am eager to fulfill it. And here, with the vision of holy Samuel, his face burning with spiritual ardor and raised to heaven. And so, the corresponding readings that go with this, And uh, some ancillary readings that come after it as well. O Yahweh, the I am that I am, why are you so far from me again? Relieve this distress in my heart. 
spare just a tiny glance for your auxiliary slaves. Yahweh, the I am who I have always been, I am who I always be, is my name, and it is holy. I felt the reign of God Almighty's love pour on me. I give you my peace. Vasula, child of the king, your father Almighty is speaking to you, and so that you, in your turn, repeat my words to all nations, revealing my holy countenance, revealing all the secrets I have been whispering in your ear. I am revealing to the world my mercy and my love. I am coming to save the oppressed from the hand of the oppressor and the deceiver. Don't let your heart trouble you, my child. Lift! Lift your damn cast voice to me again. He says, lift. Again. Lift your downcast voice to me again. You will pray, and I, your Abba, will hear you. Because I, your Abba, will hear you. Lift your eyes towards me. My child, and learn that I am your defense and your shield. Lift. <clears throat> Lift your heart to me without fear out of the darkness and gloom surrounding you. I will not allow your heart to sink. Dearest child, you are not fatherless. Feel my presence. I am who I am is with you. So lift. Lift, so we write down lift your spirit to me with joy and delight at my presence. Rejoice for my holy, almighty spirit, a true intercessor and advocate <coughs> will condescend your cause. So where are your oppressors aiming at? Yahweh, the eternal now, my God Almighty, my words have been, my words have been frivolous, but I can hardly pace with the step of your beloved Almighty Son, the unlimited salvation. I fear to be behind in this work and lose sight of Him. Do not fear. I want you to rely on my massive strength. Go in peace. Here I am, Lord, weeping again on your shoulder. I am the new Job of our times, full limits. You do not know Job if you think you are going through what Job went through. That was his answer. Now, in Tel Aviv, Israel, Prince with God, Lord, make my ears alert my ears perceiving and my heart sensitive like a disciple that I may absorb your almighty spirit. Look, I am giving you everything. He answers saying, look, I am giving you everything, a sensitive heart, a disciple's mind, and an eagerness to please me. Allow me to use you in this way. Perplexed you ought not to be by now. This is all my doing for my glory. I want you and others to share my glory with me one day. So remain in my love, child of my light. Lord, I thank you for inviting me in your homeland. He says, it pleased me to have you in the sights I had been before. I think you know what I want mostly out of you. Yes, Basula, child of the king, I want you to bring me souls that my breath, revives them, caress me with your love, caress my sorrow, caress my pains, caress my pierced heart, come to me, 
and dry my tears of blood. Child, daughter, pray near my heart and whisper your prayers to me. I will accomplish my plans in you so powerfully since you have said your yes to me. All I ask me is love, obedience, and heart now. Ichthus, I see. The initials I see for Jesus Christ. Israel, Prince with God. Messages given for the Canadian pilgrims. This is on the 18th of May. My child of the King, have my peace. I tell you so love I tell you so loved by me and so favored from my Father Almighty. I unlimited salvation of Nazareth have freed you. I have freed you all. Praise me and pray for those whose heart is still far from mine and is taken by the world. I solemnly tell you the days are counted and the one whom you have been waiting for will suddenly come upon you. So be prepared and live every day as though it is your last day on earth. I have glorified my Father Almighty. Will you not glorify me? Indeed, I, your Savior, brought you to follow my steps. Holy salvation means his traces in his homeland. I tell you, whoever serves me must follow me till the end. Whoever seeks me will find life. Whoever listens to my voice and to my words will endure trials without complaint. My law is not difficult to follow if you truly love me. Love conquers, love is manifest, love endures patiently. So come and refuse me nothing. Do not be afraid. My heart is an abyss of love. I bless you all from the core of my heart, little friends. This is love endures patiently. Peace be with you. Repeat, repeat after me these words. Holy salvation, my light. Holy salvation, my guide. I love you because you showed me the way. Holy Almighty Spirit, my holy companion and my friend. You who whisper in my ear counsel, wisdom, and consolation, I love you because you allowed my eyes to see and hear. I adore you because you resurrected me and you became all sweet manna from heaven my daily bread you have consoled my distressed and wretched soul you care for me in this desert and you are mindful to my needs you are fanning into roaring flame your gifts to all mankind for the glory of the most holy trinity. Give us all the grace to devote ourselves to obeying your statutes and that your law becomes our delight. Amen. Now, That says, I wish to ask my servants this. Are you still willing to continue working for me? Are you willing, in spite of the trials which lie ahead of you, if you are still willing, my instructions are going to be written and you can follow them? Yes, I'm willing. Sorry for all the complaining. Just grow in being forgiving, more forgiving. Later on, St. Mary says, Child of the King, 
I will always console you when the wolf's fiery words wound your soul. Satisfy my almighty son's thirst. Quench his insatiable thirst for love. Let's pray to the Father Almighty. <coughs> Father Almighty of mercy, in adoration I am at your feet. In you I hope. In belief, I love you endless, boundlessly. Amen. I repeat it. Thank you, Saint Mary. Allow me to lean on you, beloved, my almighty son, and I never leave you. Hear my son. I, and he says, I, eternal salvation, love you, soul. Love you, Lord. What will we do? I meant what are the further instructions now. All be done by me. I am the one and only holy, pure Ecclesia. Pray for this unity. Pray for those souls who reject you, my beloved ones. I love you. I am with you all the time. Holy Savior's voice is very soft and intimate here. Come to me when your heart is afflicted by the ravenous wolves. Hear me. Fasula, child of the king, my kingdom is among you. Peter, stone of my heart, stone of my lamb. This is the holy name I have given him. Peter, stone of my lamb. So let's write that down. Peter of my lambs. But the kings have dethroned him, stealing from him the crown I had honored him with. I, the Lord, love him for this one is the well-beloved of my soul. This stolen crown I will return to him. I will overthrow the false kingdoms which sallowed my body. Floating kingdoms, kingdoms without roots. I will reverse these false kingdoms and raise up in my light like a torch. My real kingdom. And to Peter Stone, I will give entirely back his seat, enthroning him. And I will place into his hand an iron scepter in which I will give him the power to reign as shepherd. I will amass my scattered lambs. I had a vision of angels trying to push together the lambs into the fold. When I have done this, I will encircle this fold with my arms. And no one, no one, not even the evil one, will be able to steal one single lamb out of this fold. My Cape, I will spread over them and shelter them in my warmth, protecting them. To Peter, stone, I shall give back what I had given him when I was on earth and in flesh. No man will transgress the bounds of my will. So all that is now is your doing, not mine. I abhor anarchy and rebellion against me. For Vasula, child of the king, betrothed, brothers, every step you take, I, the Lord, bless. I, the Lord, whom you seek, will suddenly come into my temple. I am at your door knocking. Will you let me in? With me, I carry my salvation plan. My scroll has been written and is ready to, for consumption. It should be mentioned that I relayed my salvation plan of peace and love to honor Peter's seat. As it should have been honored, I come to give him back his shepherd's crown. Approach Peter. And then...
<clears throat> there are only a few left who really love me and only a handful who understand my almighty spirit. These souls are soothing my wounds and my sacred heart is their home. He's referring to, are there no good servants left anymore? Servants who love you truly and are sincere? There are only a few left who really love me. Lord, what about the layman? And these two very few are left to believe in me, who believe in my providential works. But the majority has abandoned me, their God Almighty. And in the depths of my sacred heart lies the lance's blade, this blade which is the cause of so much bleeding. Today I am telling that he is part of the cause of my sufferings. I, the Lord, will come upon him by surprise. I will suddenly, without anyone expecting me, enter my temple. These days are numbered. I will descend like lightning, purifying the city of peace, who will fall into a heap of dust, dragging with her all those who do not love me. I mean to be her judge and judge her severely. This prophecy is starting to be fulfilled. Remember when the lightning struck the top of St. Peter's Basilica, it struck it twice at the time that Benedict had stepped down, had chosen to step down because of his ailing health. So it's now being fulfilled in Francis because he says, I'll suddenly, if anyone expects me, enter my temple. These are days and numbers. I will descend like lightning, purifying Jerusalem, who will fall into a heap of dust, dragging with her all those. So physically, the, he comes down physically as lightning, but he comes down spiritually as lightning as well. It will fall to heap of dust, dragging with her all those who do not love me. I mean to be her judge and judge her severely, but all those who remain faithful under my holy name. I, the Lord, will rise and place them into my new city of peace, Jerusalem. They need not fear since they were following my instructions and my law. Although they were suppressed in their cries to me, muffled by my enemies, I still heard them. So we put down, I still heard them. My eyes never left those saints. They feared me. They praised me. So, keeping faithful to my word, sharing all the resources I had given them and doing good works that pleased me. And then he talks about the warning of the end of times. He had warned you that in these times there are going to be people who, soup, who sneer at religion, suppressing the spirit of prophecy, ridiculing the visionaries, so they can follow their own deceitful doctrines for wickedness. Their skills turn into perverted inventions, leading them astray, lovers of evil. They cannot refrain, retain any purity of mind like folly. They're drawn into devious ceremonies and black masses, worshiping Satan. Either that or lead lives of great wickedness, for their ignorance is such that just by that alone they condemn their own lives. Uh, and now, um, and then 8th of July, Starts off with this prayer. Father, go out to the nations and teach them to pray the, to the Father Almighty this prayer. It's the reverse of Isaiah 6. It says, Father, 
all merciful. Let those who hear and hear again that never understand hear your voice this time and understand it is you, the Holy of Holy. Open the eyes of those who see and see yet never perceive to see with their eyes this time your holy faith and your glory. Place your finger on their hearts so that their heart may open and understand your faithfulness. I pray and ask you all these things, righteous Father, Almighty, that all the nations be converted and be healed through the wounds of your beloved Son, Holy Salvation, Anointed King. Amen. Now, understand then that this prayer you're asking, the salvation of the world, courage, brothers, my people's courage. I am with you every day. Preach and defend my almighty word without any fear. Proclaim my name with zeal. Remind the world that I am holy. Teach them to live holy. Be gentle like I am gentle. Have my patience and my love. Only a little while now, a very little while, and the one you are waiting for will have come. I will come as love. Yes, love shall return as love in this wilderness. And so, I will come as love. Yes, love shall return. as love. I shall fulfill the promise soon. Then 18th of September. Oh my child, bear those hardships for my sake. All these are not in vain. One day you will see the light face to face. Come and feast now in my love and my tenderness. Repose your head on my heart and listen to the calls of love. Rejoice in me. Rejoice in my splendor and my riches. I have stored this wealth for you, generation, to lead you to me with chains of love. And if you ask, how long until this wonder takes place? I will tell you that it is already taking place. My footsteps have been heard by some of you. The Lord whom you are seeking will suddenly come upon you. The one whom you are longing for is coming. So I tell you, do not resist my holy, almighty spirit who will come now in full force to unwrap the death shroud which covers your nations, prohibiting you to see the light. I will descend in full force with my almighty spirit to unmask the deceivers and drive out the traitors who infiltrated into my sanctuary. Turn your eyes to me generation and see the joy that is coming to you soon. And then he continues on with uh, my Holy Spirit will descend in its fullness not only to save the righteous but I will descend so also for judgment to give sight to the blind and take away the sight of those who say they see. And he continues on. Then on the 14th of April, it says, Your king will be coming soon. The one you have been waiting for so long shall suddenly come upon you. So courage, blood ones. Indeed, the double smoke has penetrated into my sanctuary, but what smoke lasts forever.